Hello and welcome back everyone. In this video I uh, will be doing a tutorial on triggers for Door Kickers 2. This is a fairly uh, comprehensive uh, video I'll be doing. As you can see I've just set up the basic playing field here or the, base, the basic level itself. You should all be familiar with this by now. If you go along the top menu you should see something called triggers and just place them down. So in this case I will place four triggers for you. I may not need them all but who knows. So okay let's have a quick look at one of these triggers. If we look at this trigger we shall use what we call uh, area trigger for this one. So when the AI actually enters it uh, it will trigger something off. So if we just select it from, from the list down below here on the left hand side as you can see. So select um, good guy enters area I think is what it's called. And then you can set the parameter of the uh, size of the radius anything from one meter to whatever, whatever radius is anyway. Uh, you can actually type it in yourself if you wanted to. So just double click into it, delete the old one and just type so in this case I'll just put three meters on for this one as you can see from there it's hopefully that is three meters it looks like three meters anyway let's move this guy a little bit away from there because I don't want the trigger to be triggered straight away so what I'll do here as well so that we know where the trigger is in game um, I will put a little sign in there but before I do that I need to make sure I get um, make this AI not disappear but um, away f so that he can't be viewed at all so to speak so if we put a field of vision uh, restriction here you can do it that way or blocker as they call it and also a movement blocker around him so he can't move out of this area or basically trap him in there so in theory the ranger up here should not or a character should not be able to see this at all. And let's go to the in the street objects and we'll point the arrow there. So it's just close to the actual trigger so we know where the trigger is. But we know that it's going to be three meters from center. So what we'll do in a minute. It's not actually triggering anything. It's just uh, an area trigger. You could have it trigger sound lights and stuff like that. Let's just quickly save it. I just want to make sure it's working and that the field of vision um, modifier yep it seems to work so if you if we start the game here we go as you can see around here the ranger cannot see beyond this spot and the AI will not move out to that restricted area so let's move this guy over here and so the trigger we know once he reaches three meters or within the three meter radius it should trigger something off but because we haven't attached anything to it nothing is going to trigger so we'll go back to the drawing board that was my bad actually I forgot about this one so let's go back quit the mission back click on editor and thankfully it opens up the last um, level that you were working on so this time what we'll do to trigger something, we'll trigger some AI. So if we go into humans and go to waypoint, hide this waypoint behind the uh, concealed area, the field of vision restriction, so that we don't see the person or see, it, see them spawning. The only thing I didn't realize in this as well, because I actually put an asset uh, human in here. I had never put them before and I just suddenly realized what they actually were or did. Uh, which you'll soon find out. So I'm just setting this up here. Set up the waypoint so we know where they're actually going to move. And you can see from here as soon as you attach a trigger to a waypoint you get this little uh, window pop up. So let's just add some, some of these characters here. Or some of the AI that we have. Put um, a couple of women. Uh, save it. Let's just make sure it works, which I think it will anyway. Because the area triggers are quite stable and pretty straightforward anyway. So when the AI 
actually uh, materializes or spawns, it will follow that waypoint. So here we go. Let's move that in, and away we go. Now she's a female asset with a gun, so she's on our side. And there goes the other person, the other civilian. And there we go. So we should be good. We should be good to go. Right, let's try something different now. So as we come back out again, go back, go to editor. Uh, and this time what we'll do, I keep pressing the wrong one, should really be pressing the trigger, not the actual uh, waypoint starter itself. We shall add an enemy combatant in here. There we go. Just, oops, where is it? There we go. And then we'll try that again. So we've got everything all set up, trigger all set up, save it. And here we go. Let's see what happens. So as soon as we enter the area, which is now, well, once it moves, it's now. Let me just pie this area out so that he's actually looking in the direction of the enemy unit. There's a female, it shoots that one. Unfortunately, she gets shot by the insurgent or enemy AI that was in there as well. So we'll come out of that quickly. So we know that aspect of it works. We'll try something different now. Right, let's have a look at this one. This is the area trigger that we created earlier. We've got another trigger up here. What we need to do is attach it so that that trigger triggers once the first trigger is triggered. It's too many trigger triggers. So we'll put this down to combat start. If combat starts, let's stick it on there. And then what will happen, let's do another waypoint. So go back to human, go to the waypoint and click on here. And we'll have them coming this way. So they're sort of almost flanking our soldier. So we've attached it to this waypoint. Now we should, in theory, put some more enemy so we'll just put some enemy combatants in here and we'll make this two I think that would be a good number to start with and this is basically how I develop my missions and games because I tend to do a lot of testing myself uh, and then I just slowly develop it from there so let's quickly save it as always always get into the habit of saving your work because at the end of the day you don't want to be losing stuff that you've worked on as you can see from here I've, I've disabled the actual trigger itself so it's going to be enabled when the other trigger kicks, when the first trigger kicks. So if we put this into practice, here we go. And hey presto. Here's a asset, shoots the bad guy. Killed. And those two. Yeah. So that's, that, in this example, you've basically got a trigger triggering another trigger which we disabled originally otherwise if we left it enabled the AI would just materialize and go straight in there I think so that's okay so that's a trigger triggering a trigger that we've done there let me see what else we can do here let's set always on we don't really want to do that because that will always keep that will always trigger and I don't really like making triggers that just trigger for the sake of it. I'd rather they actually did something, so they either uh, rewarded the, the player or did something else. In this example, what I'm going to do is put some light, some flashing blue light. I'm not sure whether this is a good example. Maybe we could have put the um, put an ordinary light in here. I'll, I'll try it next time. I'll put a fluorescent tube in there and see what happens. Maybe this isn't a good example, but let's just increase the radius and intensity. I think this only triggers off once, so I can't remember, quite remember. We'll have to play play test this and see. Now, I don't know what these things are for. Possibly the shadow, if it casts a shadow in, in game. I don't know, I really don't. But uh, we'll give it a go, we'll see what happens. 
So what we can do is let's attach it to that one. So if combat is started, that will trigger that. And we need to attach it to the actual light itself. Now we could, and I think, yep, yeah, might be best if we assign it to there as well so that it gets triggered as soon as combat starts, basically. So we'll use that one, the area trigger is the primary trigger. One trigger to trigger them all, as they say. So here we go, let's try that again. The light's already showing, but it's not flashing at the moment, so I'm not sure whether that's good or bad, I don't know. I don't think it's flashing. Or is it? They're here! Bad guys, right, let's try something else. So just bear with me, guys. Just want to get rid of the other AI that shot our friend, <laughs> that shot our asset. As soon as this clears, I should have a clear sight on him. And there you go. So that ends the game. And we shall try that again. We'll try some, some different kind of uh, trigger on this one. Just bear with me one second. So we go back into the editor. So that's flashing away. I'll just delete that. That's not really that necessary to have. Delete that one as well. What should we do for this one? Um, yeah, let's do a VIP one, a rescue one. Okay, let me just set this up and attach it to there. Let's create a little building. I'm not going to I'm just going to roughly go through this because I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Just a really rough structure. Like so. It's only just so we can place the actual VIP in there. Or the high value target. I forget which of the VIP or high value target. Are they the same thing? I do not know. We'll soon find out. Soon. Okay. Now if we put a VIP in here. So specifically for this trigger. So if VIP happens, we can set off another trigger that fires off enemy. Let's just connect that to this um, waypoint node. That should give us a clear... S oh, well that one. Oh, okay, we'll go to that one. We'll add some more. With every trigger, if you place it into the same um, waypoint, it gives you a, a completely different set of um, options here to put in more enemy AI, which I've done. Let's just see what happens. I think in this one it goes slightly wrong because this, the enemy are all still about um, or get killed and it dies. But we're going to have to change the parameter on that, which is easy enough. It's to do with um, map settings and just change it there from uh, eliminate all hostiles or kill all hostiles to uh, rescue VIP or something like that to change it but I hadn't changed the parameter in this one that's why the game ended so abruptly once everybody was killed but we'll give this a go and we'll see what happens uh, it's no big deal I can do another uh, tutorial video on that one if need be but I don't think I will I don't think it's necessary anyway. So here we go. Let's try this again. Talk amongst yourself. Let me just select see which ones we can do. Unfortunately, what happens is because of the parameter settings I've put, um, which was just to eliminate all hostiles, it, this bit of trigger didn't actually work. I might add it I'll play test this and make sure that it, it does work I might do an updated video I'm not too sure we'll see how it goes see if I get time <clears throat> I'm starting to lose my voice here hopefully I'm coming this okay 
I don't think I should have killed all those hostiles, not to worry. And the game abruptly ends there. Okay guys, uh, thanks for watching. That's really to do with triggers. I'll do some more tutorials on this and also how to build, build another level up again. As you can see, I've been pretty busy doing a couple of levels a week. Anyway, please subscribe and like and thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.